Alright everyone, it's time to start counting down. Next week the CrossFit Games start, one of the most complete tests of human physical fitness in the world. Athletes are tested over a wide range of exercise modalities and time domains, usually in hot and humid conditions. So to endure those brutal tests of fitness, athletes must sustain high power output by converting chemical energy from food towards mechanical energy in the form of ATP to sustain muscular contractions. In today's video, I will estimate the energy expenditure of both male and female athletes at the CrossFit Games. I will base these estimations on data we have gathered ourselves in elite CrossFit athletes and supplement it with existing literature on energy expenditure of daily activities. So what do you think? How many cheeseburgers does it take to survive one day of the CrossFit Games? Let's find out! Hi everyone, I'm Komar. I'm a senior scientist at ETH Zurich based in Switzerland. And for the last decade or so I studied and taught different topics of exercise physiology and now I want to bring back some of that knowledge back to you guys. So, if we want to calculate energy expenditure of a human throughout the day, we have to look into four different pillars. First, basal metabolic rate. How much energy is basic metabolism expending in rest? For example, how much energy there is needed for your heart, your muscles, etc. when you're just doing nothing, laying in your bed. Then, obviously, the energy you expend during physical activity. In this case, the events of the CrossFit Games. I will talk about the third day of last year's CrossFit Games. I will get into that later, but obviously there's high amount of energy expenditure. Then it also costs energy to digest and to use the food that you eat. Approximately 10% of your basic metabolic rate goes to the thermic effect of food. So also that we have to take into account. And then the last but not least part would be non-exercise activity thermogenesis. What is that? That's basically all the activities you do or the energy you expend to those activities that are not pure physical activity. So not the events of the CrossFit Games. For example, walking from and to the events, cooling down, warming up, self-care and so forth. All right, so those four things all add up to your total energy expenditure. And in this video, I want to estimate how much that is for a male and female CrossFit Games athlete. So let's first start with basic metabolic rate. The best way to assess this is by laying down in a bed and just measuring oxygen consumption rate. Obviously, we are not able to do that in CrossFit Games athletes, so we have to go off certain estimations. And a good estimation or a good formula would be from Mifflin and Yeor. It is a paper from the 1990s where they used a large cohort of people to generate a formula to estimate your basic metabolic rate. And it would be a complicated formula. You can read it here. And if we transpose this uh, formula to, for example, one of my favorite male athletes, and I have to take him in in this video, would be Patrick Vellner. It would equate to approximately 1845 kilocalories because in this, in this formula you use the weight, 88.5, the height and also the age. Again, this is just an uh, estimation, but ballpark numbers, it will be around 2000 kilocalories. He, let's say, expends on his basic metabolic rate uh, every day. Then we also have Laura Horvat. Other uh, female athlete, obviously, who won the CrossFit Games last year, so I think it's appropriate to also add her in. And she weighs 70 kilos, is 1 meter 70 and, and 27 years old. If you put that formula of basic metabolic rate or you transpose that formula on her data, you would come to approximately 1467 kilocalories per day. Again, estimations, but that's something we can take already with us. Now, the tricky part. How much energy are they expending during the actual events of the CrossFit Games? And here, obviously, I also had to pick one day. Obviously, there you can take many days, but I took the third day of the CrossFit Games of last year, 2023, because it had a nice endurance event, a strength-only event, and also a CrossFit event, a pure CrossFit event. And it was a cross-country 5K run, maybe you remember. Pat and also Lara did this in 17 and 19 minutes respectively. Then the intervals, typical CrossFit style workout, very nice. It took them under 9 minutes, so 7.20 for Pat. Lara took a little bit longer, 8.32. 
And then the Olympic total, obviously much trickier to assess actual uh, caloric uh, expenditure, not so important here. But um, just to say, it took them always 20 minutes because they were uh, lifting always every minute or every two minutes. And then there were several athletes on the platform. So they had a, obviously the, the lift itself took only one or two seconds, but total event was 20 minutes. So now the question will be, how much energy are they expending during the event? That will be, let's say, the meat part of this video. And also, I think, where you can learn a little bit from, also from exercise physiology point of view and also physics. What we want to know is how many watts there are expending during the event. Because if we know the watts, then we know the calories. Because watts is simply euler per second or calories per per second. So we need the watts and we need the time of the event and then we can estimate the amount of energy they expended in a pretty well or uh, accurate base. And then we have to know, okay, how much energy of a total event is coming from aerobic sources and how much is coming from anaerobic sources. We know that CrossFit athletes are well equipped in both sides, so we have to make some estimations there. So first of all, how much energy can a CrossFit Games athlete uh, expend during a maximal aerobic test. And there we have to look at our own data from a paper we published uh, not so long ago, I think six months ago, where we assessed a physiological profile of elite CrossFit Games athletes, not all CrossFit Games elite athletes. And uh, what we did is, one of the tests we did was a critical power test. So what is that? It's really a brutal test where you kind of have to sprint from the beginning all out for three minutes. So you always have to think that the finish line is 10 meter in front of you and not pacing at all. So obviously your power output is super high in the beginning, high anaerobic energy production, but then you cannot sustain it and you have to keep going, keep going, even though you are completely exhausted. But at the end of those three minutes, the last 30 seconds, we take the energy output in watts and that would be your maximal aerobic capacity, all right? And if you look at the numbers of elite athletes who made it to the semifinals as well as to the game, so really well equipped athletes. We are looking at 334 watts critical power for uh, the men and 224 uh, critical power for the females. So we know that if they do a workout, it will be close to that number coming from aerobic sources. Then we also know that a workout, a CrossFit workout, would be 90%, 85% when it's longer than three to four minutes will be aerobically. So there is a percentage that these athletes can produce anaerobically, right? So I also equated for that. So then we come to an estimation for the 5K and the intervals, which are both pretty short workouts, that again, their threshold power, so their aerobic power would be around 340 and 230 watts, as I just explained. But 15% on top of that would be anaerobic uh, power production, all right? So uh, anaerobic watts production. So in total, during those events, obviously it's an estimation and it will be a bit higher during the interval and potentially a bit lower during the 5K, will be approximately 390 watts they can sustain. And also, if you think about it from other uh, data and other elite cyclists, for example, that would be, a, I think, a quite good estimation on the grand scheme of things. So that we know. We know that they're expending 390 watts during those events. I'm only looking at the 5K in the intervals, not at the lifting event. I will come back to that later, obviously. Good. So we estimated their total energy expenditure in watts, in euler per second, during that event. So then we want to know how many calories is that actually per hour. And obviously we can quite easily calculate that because we know that one EULA is 0.23 calories, right? Calories, not kilocalories, calories. And one watt, as I already said, is one EULA per second. So if you make those calculations, you come to, for example, for the males, a million 400 EULA, total EULA, not kilo EULA, EULA. This would equate to 335 kilocalories that they only expend on moving their body during those events. Importantly, and that's something that people forget a lot, is that only 20% of all the energy you expend is going to mechanical movement. 80% is actually dissipated in heat. That's also why it's so dangerous or you have to watch out to exercise in super hot conditions because the body has a hard time to cool down. That's also another video topic, I think, for a later uh, stage. This means that um, the total energy expenditure for such an event per hour 
looking at per hour would be 1677 kilocalories and 1140 kilocalories for the, the, the males and the females respectively. All right, so that is ballpark estimations per hour, what they are expending towards those first two events. This is per hour or per minute, obviously, if you divide it by uh, 60. If you uh, want to know then the total energy expenditure per event, you just have to uh, multiply it by the minutes. And then we are looking at 484 kilocalories for Patrick during the run, 361 for Laura during the run, and the intervals, because it was much shorter, will be 205 and 161 kilocalories, respectively, for uh, Pat and uh, Laura. So in those events, those first two events, Pat would expend approximately 700 kilocalories, a bit less, and Laura 522 kilocalories. So that would be an estimation of the energy expended during those first two events. So exactly during. I'm not talking about the warm-up. Because a large part of energy expenditure, and maybe that's something you, you, you kind of forget or really didn't think about, is on non-exercise activity thermogenesis. What do I mean with that? It's just simply the energy expended towards activities that are not actually lifting or moving the body during the events. This would be a warm-up cool-down, as I said. The event itself, so the Olympic total, I put that also there because, as I said, it's not very high energy expenditure and I think it's better to just put it there um, compared to actually uh, assessing it as physical activity. Then we have walking, moving, obviously, between the events, personal care, like showering and so on, laying in bed, and then other light, light activities or whatever, talking with the fans, uh, doing interviews and so on. Obviously, those also require some energy. I put the time as well, estimated time that uh, also discussed this with the high-level coach, how much this would be, and you can see it in the middle uh, column, so some, something from 20 minutes to 120 minutes, depending on the activity. And then you also see a third column, the MET, the metabolic equivalent, and that is also based on literature of how much, compared to basal metabolic rate, does this activity require. So for example, warming up and cooling down would be approximately three times or three and a half times the energy expenditure of basic metabolic rate, all right, or basal metabolic rate, or uh, a light event such as Olympic uh, total would be four times the basal metabolic rate of energy expenditure, right? Then you have personal care or uh, very light activities would be two times the basal metabolic rate. For example, I'm here making this video. I'm not fully in my basal metabolic rate. I'm still moving. I'm still using my voice, my muscles, etc. So it would be two and a half times approximately my basal metabolic rate. And if we know the METs or we can estimate the METs, we can simply calculate also the total calories or kilocalories per minute by doing the MET times the weight in kilograms. So so taking into account the weight of the person uh, times one divided by 60, and then you have a, an approximation of the amount of calories a person expends during those activities. And if you would do those math, I'm not gonna do it with you here, but I did it already beforehand, you would equate to 1,177 kilocalories for Pat, and Laura sits just below 931 kilocalories. Good, so now we have actually all the four pillars of energy expenditure. There's one little thing we have to add, and that's the thermic effect of food, which is 10% of your total basal metabolic rate, approximately. Again, these are estimations, that's the best we have. If you, for example, eat a little bit more protein, this will be higher, more carbs, it will be a bit less. But that's not super important here. So if you add all those pillars together, the events, the 5K as well as the interval, the need, which would be the daily activities, but also the warm-up and um, event three or the Olympic lift, and then the basal metabolic rate, as we discussed before, you would come for Patrick towards a grand total of 4,082 kilocalories, daily kilocalories, during a day of the CrossFit Games with those three events. As well, for Laura, it would equate to 3,200 kilocalories, obviously, because she's lighter and a female. So just for fun, we can also look at how does that relate to, for example, the energy expenditure of Tour de France cyclists, which obviously the Tour de France is one of the most brutal, uh, hard endurance races, pure endurance races in the world. And there's actually quite some good data, some accurate data on this. 
For example, here an older paper where they looked at four Tour de France cyclists weighing 70 kilograms and they uh, expended approximately 5,800 kilocalories uh, per day. So that is, I would say, substantially higher than a CrossFit Games athlete because also a CrossFit Games athlete is definitely heavier than those uh, people. And that is because Tour de France cyclists spend more energy in their activity compared to the CrossFit Games athletes. So actually spend more energy in their neat window of energy expenditure. Good. Also interesting, you see here that uh, cyclists eat approximately 800 or 850 grams of carbohydrates per day. That is more than 10 grams per kilogram body weight. That would also be something that most of the CrossFit games are going to do. And then the question of the question for Pat Vellner, how many cheeseburgers does he have to eat to get to his 4,000 kilocalories per day? And this would be 14 cheeseburgers, depending obviously in which restaurant you get them. Or if you look at more carbohydrates and less fats, 39 average bananas. Just for fun, that is quite a large amount of food. So this was already it for me today. I am looking to do more games special videos where I look into a specific questions related to the CrossFit Games. And if you have some input or if you have a specific question related to the CrossFit Games, put them in the comments below and this can serve me well for inspiration for future videos. I look at all the comments. Thank you for watching. Hope you get some value out of this. If you did, please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel and only takes one second of your time. All right, see you in the next one. Ciao.